Electrical signal needs to travel through a medium. For example, like in the neuron, it has the axon acting as a medium. But at the synapse, the open space is open to the cytoplasm. Therefore, there's no medium for the electrical signal to travel through. And for that reason, because it's open to the cytoplasm, if it's electrical, then it will get lost in space. So we need some that could travel through the synapse from one axon to another dendrite without getting lost, and in this case, that would be chemical. Some animals do. Some animals have less complex nervous system than us. And then there are other that has neuron which is longer than us. For example, like an elephant, it has a neuron up to one meter long. The electrical signal in a nerve system is called an action potential. The message is received at the dendrite, then an action potential is sent through the axon, and then it meets at the axon terminal and it will go to the next dendrite, and it repeats. To generate an action potential, chemicals are simply flowing into and out of the cell, the nerve cell, in order to generate a gradient across the cell membrane, which would become an action potential. Here we're looking at a nerve cell. On the left side of the graph is the inside of the cell, the orange, and on the right side, the blue represents the outside of the cell. There's a lot of chemicals that play a role here, but the most important one on the outside is sodium, which is very high concentration on the outside, and on the inside of the cell is potassium. In order to go through the membrane, they need to go through a gated channel. Here's the same perspective as before, except this time it shows the gated channel. So here, first of all, inside the cell we have a lot of potassium, and it shows the potassium going out. And then over here we have a lot of sodium, and the sodiums are going in. So the action potential will look something like this. For the first bar, notice that sodium rushes in, and then it becomes positive on the inside, and then potassium rushes out, which leads us to number two and then it goes to the next part of the membrane. The next part of the membrane, the sodium rushes in and then potassium rushes out behind it and then so on repeats and it travels down the axon creating an action potential. No, they don't occur at the same time. It's one right after the other. Sodium first, sodium rushes in, followed by potassium rushing out. So here's a graph that you'll see very often when you're learning about the nervous system. This occur at one point of the axon, not the whole thing, but just one, and then it's, so it's one action potential being generated. For now, we're not going to study the graph in detail, we're just going to look at it simply. So, one, two, three, as the action potential is being generated. First, what happened is sodium starts to slowly rush in, and then it starts to rush in more, and then at three, it rush in very quickly. So all the sodiums are rushing in, which generate an action potential ready to be released. Then four, five, and then back to one, it's when potassium is now rushing out, and then five, potassium is rushing out at an even greater rate, and then eventually, they both come to a point where they just stop. Well, technically, so sodium would be all inside, and then potassium would be all on the outside. So that's when they come to their, okay, resting state, getting ready for the next one. So simply, it's just sodium rushing in quickly, and then followed by potassium rushing out quickly. The action potential does occur along the whole axon, but in terms of the graph that we're looking at, right, this graph shows an action potential generated at one point of the axon. And then when you move on to the next point of the axon, you have another same thing as a graph. So the graph is simply telling you that an action potential is generated, and then it relaxes. And an action potential is generated, and then it relaxes. And it keeps repeating till it reaches the end of the axon.
Yes, anything that's electrical can damage the medium that it travels on. So for example, like think of an office where you have lots of lights. So what happens if you leave the lights on for a long, very long time? What happens to the wires? What happens to the light bulb? Eventually, the, electric, the electricity is going to fry all those stuff, right? And once it gets fried or damaged, then you eventually have to replace them. So in order to prevent them from getting fried and damaged, what you do is you turn off the light when you're not using. So in your body, your nerve system is the same thing. When you're thinking or doing things, eventually all those signals is going to build up and then slowly damage your nerve cells over time. And then once it reaches a very high level of damage, eventually it has to shut down. And so what happens is you go to sleep.